Hi everybody, I'm Charles, Big Kahuna with BigKahunaBrew.com. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today we're back here in front of my cellar slash beer rack over here. And uh, I don't know what we're going to drink, but we're going to drink it out of this glass. It is a uh, Golden Monkey glass from Victory uh, Brewing. And it's just another glass that I picked up at a liquor store one day along the way. So I really dig that glass. Let's see if we can find something to go into it here. And uh, this is this is my beer rack. Um, this is where I store a lot of the beers that uh, I pick up and either want to age and sell or try and keep for a long time um, or anything that I just don't have anywhere else for it to go. Uh, have some starter wort here and just, you know, odds and ends and everything. So um, one thing that I see right off the bat is I have a bottle of Stone uh, Smoked Porter and uh, it is got a tag on it that unfortunately doesn't say anything other than 2008. Um, we're not live, but I wanted to do this as close as we could, so I guess we'll deal with that. Uh, Stone Smoked Porter uh, out of San Diego, California. And, uh, you know, Stone, Stone Porter is a solid beer. Um, if you've never had this one, definitely should give it a shot. Uh, this one is apparently... Um, a four years old, maybe three and a half, something like that, uh, depending on when I got it. Like I said, I normally put these little tags on anything that I really intend to um, intend to keep for a long period of time. I'll throw one of these little labels on it, and that way I don't end up four years later trying to figure out what the hell it is I'm drinking. So um, I suppose we could go into depth about the Stone Porter, but that's not what anybody wants. So let's just go ahead and get this one open. And we are drinking this at cellar temperature. Um, it is about 55 degrees down here right now. Um, maybe a little cooler. It's been pretty cold over the last few days, and the temperature in this basement does fluctuate. Uh, but it never goes above about somewhere in the 70 degree neighborhood in the winter time or in the summertime. I can always bring uh, fermenting beer down here, and I never have to worry about it getting too hot. And so. Um, you know, my beers age at whatever temperature it is down here. Same thing with my wines and my meads, and they all age at this temperature. So, uh, go ahead and pour this one into the glass here. I'll give it my usual chintzy pour and probably not build much of a head with it, but it is coming out awful pretty. Let's see if we can pour that all over the place there. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you may have noticed we're in black and white today. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing with my photography, uh, both for the blog and, and uh, for some other projects and stuff that I'm doing, is I set my camera uh, to monochrome, and I'm leaving it there, uh, at least to the end of this week, probably to the end of the next week, and who knows where we'll go from there. Um, I do have something going on the weekend of the 19th, uh, the, the Castaway Beach Bash in Blongo Bay. I will be in color for that. But uh, I feel it really pushes, you know, just like everything I do, I try and push the envelope, I try and, and do all of these things, and then every once in a while you just have to come back to the basics. Um, not unlike homebrew, when you get to the point where you've brewed all of the IPAs and you've used all the hops that you can cram into a boil kettle, and then you've dry hopped it, and then you've put it through a randall on your tap coming out, sometimes you have to just step back and make a mild. And that's kind of what I've done both with photography and apparently today video. Uh, is we're back to black and white, so hopefully this works out. Um, we still got good carbonation here, so the bottle held sealed just fine, which I really didn't expect anything less. Uh, the head has turned a little rocky on top, and that's kind of interesting. It's uh, you know it looks a little creamy right there on top, and then and then in in the in the side of the glass there, it's starting to uh, it almost looks like mattress foam. It's just really kind of uh, the bubbles are getting a lot bigger in there. There is the the smoke seems to have gotten a little more pronounced. Strangely enough, um, maybe this is just a little stronger bottle than the last few I've had. Uh, I wouldn't make any predictions there, but the there's definitely a smoky flavor there that's uh, stronger than what I'm used to with this beer. It's complex. It's mellow. Um, this, this is not harsh in any way. Um, I would give this beer to anyone looking to try uh, a smoked beer. It's not like some of the uh, German ones that I'm not even going to try and pronounce their name. Um, or even the, my home-brewed smoked beer that I made um, that was just so over the top that it really was um, a little difficult to drink. So this is really smooth. Um,
Yeah, yeah, that's good. If you get a chance to grab a stone smoked porter and set it in your basement for, you know, four years, I would certainly recommend that. That is a great beer. Uh, one of the things that I like about uh, about this video format is I get to sound like an idiot saying um and uh a lot, but you guys are, you know, it's like you're here with me checking out this beer. I wish every one of you could try this because obviously not everybody has the opportunity to get their hands on a four-year-old bottle of of beer one way or the other unless it's the Coors Light that you found in the back of your fridge and I wouldn't wish that on anybody so anyway uh, big announcement coming up on Monday and that'll be an extra segment here um, and that's look for that it'll come out at six o'clock on Monday morning just like everything but on Monday and I will be probably bringing you another video either from or directly after the Belongo Bay Beach Bash in uh, uh, St. Thomas with Rum Shop Ryan and his crew. So I am expanding my palate. I hope you are too. Uh, drink what you like. Cheers, everybody.